We made it. It's game day, baby. <laughs> it's, it's real now, man. <laughs> It's real now, man. We've been waiting for so long, but our wait is finally almost over because we got a couple more hours to go, well, depending on when you're watching this. But anyway, team, keep it clean. It's it's time, man. It, it's time. And I, I know your blood is boiling, is pumping, your hearts are racing, and just that excitement, man, because it's about to be real now. No more talking. Like, well, I mean, we better do a little bit more talking now because we got some questions to answer. But after this video, no more talking. No more wondering, oh, how are they going to do? What are they going to No, we about to watch the game today. So I'm excited about it. Something else that I'm excited about is this hoodie that I'm going to be wearing during the live stream. This Road to Vegas hoodie from Heart of the City Clothing. If you want yours. You can get yours, order it before the game, order it after the game, order it, period. If you want yours, go click on the link in the description and use code engraving to get 20% off your order. So if you order two, if you order three of them, if you order four of them, use code engraving because the, the bigger your order, the bigger the percent off it is. Well, not the percent off, but the bigger the dollars off it is because it's still 10%. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my. I'm tripping. 10% will be a lot. It's 20% off. 20% off. So use code engraving. Team, keep it clean. Let's get into it. Man, we got some great questions, and we got some great questions from some great people. First off, I got to give a special shout-out to some of the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, Brooks became a patron uh, three weeks ago. Arnold, uh, Derek, uh, A.W. Juice Man, my guy Joshua, uh, Carl, and the newest Team Keep It Clean patron who just became a patron yesterday, my guy Darren. So shout-out to everybody, all the new Team Keep It Clean patrons, all the old Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all big time. Now, Let's get into these questions. First one came from my guy, Travis, who's been a patron for, ooh, for five months. So I appreciate that, man. Oh, no, 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 no. Excuse me. For a year. I was reading the wrong thing. He's been a patron for a year, so I appreciate you. He said, hey, man, it's been a while since I did one of these questions. I hope you and the family are doing great. We are. We're doing real good, man. And I hope you're doing even better. And I hope we doing, we're all doing even better in about eight, nine hours. But anyway, he said... Um, do you think Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley's time in Baltimore will come to an end in the near future based upon injuries and inconsistency? Love the content. Keep up the great work. Appreciate you, Travis. Whew, that's a question right there. It's crazy because um, Ronnie Stanley's been playing a lot better <laughs> toward the end of the year. But they've also been doing that rotation with, with Ronnie Stanley, too. He ain't been out there full time. Um, so I do believe his time could come to an end. Soon, if not this off season, then certainly next off season. But I think it could happen this off season, especially depending on how things go in the postseason. Marlon Humphrey, uh, this year has just been an off year with him with injuries. He's been hurt a lot this year. I, I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, well, ever since he signed a contract, he just been getting hurt all the time. He ain't been worth it." And he did miss because uh, a couple years ago he missed the to, a chunk of the end of the season when he went down in the Steelers game with a pec injury, I think. Um, how did he do last year? Last year did he play the whole year? I think he did, but I, I don't even remember. Was that no? Last year wasn't the year where he got hurt, right? I don't think it was. Anyway, I I I can't even remember right now. My mind is like, I can't even remember right now because because it's game day. So yeah, yeah exactly. Y'all get it. Um, but anyway, I, I know a lot of people have been frustrated with Marlon Humphrey and all the time that he's been missing, but he's still a good cornerback. Um, but I know this season has had a lot of people questioning his ability, questioning how good. Or how not good they think he is. Um, but Marlon Humphrey, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think he's going anywhere at all. Ronnie Stanley, yes. Marlon Humphrey, no. I, I, I don't see it at all. A reason to worry. Next question came from my guy Michael. He said, hey, hope you and the family are doing well and everything's going smoothly with the baby. I appreciate that. Thank you. He said, I have a question for you. I'm driving and I'm yelling at myself in the mirror. Why are they putting both top seat teams on the same day to play part? Uh, to, to, to play? Part of me thinks it's a setup. Uh, the other part of me thinks that's how it's always been. It just never paid. A, I just maybe never paid attention to it. Help me out. I'm struggling. So you talking about the schedule? Honestly, um, I have not. The only game that I know that happened on Saturday is the Ravens and the Texans. Um, I know it's another NFC game happening that day, but I have not like paid attention to which one it is because I just been so focused and locked on on Ravens Texans. All right. So Raven. Oh, okay. The two number one seeds. So Ravens and Texans. And 49ers and Packers. I mean, it's number one seed day versus number two seed day. Or wherever the Detroit Lions are. I'm not sure where they are. But, um, yeah, it's, I mean, 
That's the. I don't think it's a big deal, man. It, it's, it's just how the schedule uh, ended up making it. Uh, I mean, but with the primetime games, uh, though the primetime games are for games with the the bigger audiences. So the bigger audience is definitely. 49ers and Packers not Ravens and Texans that's not a bigger audience between those two and then in the second day the bigger audience is Buffalo KC is definitely not Detroit and Tampa Bay so it's about timing it's about the market size and whatnot and who will bring in the bigger numbers next question came from my guy Ronald he said what's up Ing? first time question here new to the community I'm glad to be a part of it and I appreciate your hard work hey I appreciate you Ronald he said now I've recently learned that Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans played alongside JJ Watt in the AFC championship game versus the Ravens in 2011 we didn't play them in the AFC championship in 2011 no AFC championship um in 2011 was uh the 2011 season was against the the patriots because that was the why i'd left then in the 2012 season it was against the patriots again the ravens just ran it back they came right back and they ended up beating them that year uh but but we did play in them in the the wild card or the divisional which one it was where, where jacoby jones was helping us out I think it, I, whichever one, Jacoby Jones came through for us. That was even before he was a Raven, but that's when he officially became a Raven, before he officially became a Raven. Anyway, he said, uh, how fascinating would it be to see these guys who are familiar with each other go at it on the coaching side? And do you think the history between the two will play a part? Sorry for being long-winded. Go Ravens. No, man, that wasn't long-winded at all. Um, J.J. Watt? Oh, so you mean if J.J. Watt like became a coach? That would be something. That would be different. I wonder if he is interested in coaching. I wonder because – um. It's crazy. It really, uh, really makes me feel kind of old because I remember D'Amico Ryans. I remember watching him with the Texans. I remember playing with him in Madden. And it's like, man, like now he's a coach, man. It's crazy. Same, same thing with Gerard Mayo, too. Another one. Another linebacker turned into a coach. John Lynch, he was another one turned into a GM. Like, he went from safety, Super Bowl champ with the Bucks, to a GM, the general manager of a football team and a good football team at that. So, hey, it's just, it's just crazy. You never know where life will take you. You never know where life will take these players and whatnot. And it's just it's crazy to see it. Lamar Jackson's actual playoff record. Next question came from my guy Ryan. He said, what's up, bro? I got a question. I need your expertise. I ain't got no expertise at all. But anyway, he said, isn't Lamar Jackson's actual one? And, isn't he actually one and two in the playoffs? The only games I recall him losing were the Chargers and the Titans in, in 2019 and 2020. Uh, well, the Chargers was in 2018 and the Titans, well, oh yeah, the year 2019 technically, but 2018 season, but yeah, you got it. He said, why are people counting the Bengals loss against him? Didn't Tyler Huntley lose that game? They're not counting that one. They're counting the Bills loss in 2020. Well, the year 2020, well, the, excuse me, the season 2020, but the year 2021. That's the one uh, because he didn't finish that game, but he started the game. So that's why they count that loss on Lamar. He said, I get it, that playoff performance needs to improve, but I don't like him being criticized for something that he had no control over. Am I missing something? Counting, count, continue blessing. Man, my mind is just so gone right now. Continue blessings to you and the fam. Appreciate it, Ryan. But yeah, the, the game that everybody was talking about as a third loss is the one against the Bills where he started. And then he ended up leaving that game with a concussion. This should be a fun ride. Next question came from Elijah. He said, what's up, Ingram? I hope you and the family are doing well. I'm so excited for this Super Bowl run. I don't even know where to begin. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I'm already contemplating what path to the Super Bowl I really want. First things first, we must take care of the Texans. Wrap up their season. I'm super confident Mike will have the defense well prepared for C.J. Stroud, and they will execute it to as close as perfect to perfection as possible. I really, really want the Bills for the AFC Championship because they knocked us out last time. It's not that I'm worried about my homes, but I just feel it in my soul if we get Baltimore versus KC in the AFC Championship and we win they will make a mountain of excuses for Mahomes throwing shade on Lamar's first Super Bowl run look whatever happens I don't care like straight up man I, I would not care if Ray Ravens obviously got to take care of the Texans and then whether they got to go against the Bills whether they got to go against the Chiefs, wh whoever whatever hey get it done get it done if people want to make excuses say oh well this whoa well that oh well because of the oh don't care. Don't care. So, anyway, continuing. He said, um, I would rather face the Bills because being that they are on a win streak. <laughs> Plus, the media is already hyping them up, making less excuses for that matchup. Now, we all know the, the super narrative spinners are going to still make it seem like Mahomes was handicapped this year. And it's the only reason why another team had a chance. We will deal with that goal post later. Right now, it's time to stomp this rookie hype out. Just like every time they get a chance to throw shade when CJ was hot, people was quick to try to compare him to Lamar. 
Yeah, that, that's what happens, man. Uh, and he said, uh, Flock need to have LJ back. Sorry for the rambling. I'm just excited. Your thoughts on next week's matchup? I call it the hype versus the narrative. Okay, I like that, man. But yeah, again, let's get it done. That's it. Just get it done. Get it done. Figure out a way to get it done. Make it happen. Go out there. Execute. Everybody come out ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Don't start all slow. Start all fast. Start all hot. And just get this thing done. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, uh, the script has been written. Have you seen a conspiracy about the Super Bowl logo and its colors? Apparently, the colors tell us who is going to the Super Bowl. A family member told me about this and also seen it on Twitter. So what are your thoughts on it? I said, hey, what, whatever. Ravens, Ravens in the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. The whole colors and all that. I've been seeing that for a while. But, hey, I, I remember, I think last year, no, the year before last, they were like, oh, uh, look at who's in the, um, I think the discount, double check the, the State Farm commercial. That's going to be who's going to be in the Super Bowl. That ended up being wrong. But as long as Ravens in there and they win it, that's all I care about. So I, I could care less about the colors and all that. Who cares? He also said, with Derrick Henry being a free agent as well as Gus, which player do you think the Ravens go after? Also, if Cook plays great, do we try and keep him? Oh, yeah, I think they definitely would try to keep Cook if he plays great. Now, I wonder, depending on how Dalvin Cook does uh, in these next three games, you see what we did there? But depending on how he does, I wonder if that could be a factor for them potentially keeping Gus or potentially going in another direction and going after somebody else. Uh, because that, that, so that right there, I think, will determine everything, whether it's with Dalvin Cook, with Gus Edwards, with, with Derrick Henry, with whoever, with Jerry Gay Dobbins, throw him in the mix too. But I think that will determine everything, depending on how Dalvin Cook does. Because they know Gus Edwards already. They have Justice Hill under contract already. They got Keith Mitchell under contract. But Dalvin Cook is a wild card. Gus Edwards is a wild card. Well, Dalvin Cook is a wild card, but he's the one that you don't know all the way about yet. Next question came from my guy Stone two times. He said, what's up, and great? And recently, I posted a question on Twitter about Kyle Hamilton and his potential. The question I asked was, am I crazy for thinking this man has a chance to be the best defensive player the Ravens have ever had? Oof. Let me just keep reading and then we'll get into it. He said, now, as you could expect, there were people saying yes, while some said no. There were people saying I'm crazy, while others said I'm right on point. I know the man is only in year two, but have we ever witnessed a player like Kyle? His height, his length, his speed, the ability to play anywhere on the field, the IQ, and he's only in year two. This team has been built on great defensive players like Ray, Ed, Suggs, Nada, Woodson, and so on. But could Kyle really get to that point? Me personally, I think he'll end up near the top if we can keep him paired with Roquan, as well as keeping a great coordinator. He's grown so much already, I can't wait to see him in this defense in the playoffs this year. I'll leave a picture of the tweet as well as the link if you'd like to check it out and check out some of the responses. Oh, trust me, I seen him. I, 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 I saw all of them. Well, maybe not all of them, because it was a whole lot, but I saw a lot of them. And I, I saw some people like, yeah, and I saw some people like, no, and I saw some people respectfully give their opinion, and I saw some people... Unfortunately, because you know how Twitter is disrespectfully give their opinion. You know, you know how it goes. Anyway, he said, I appreciate all you do. Keep on keeping it clean and let's go win a Super Bowl. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Can Kyle Hamilton be uh the one of the best defensive players? Oh, be the best defensive player the Ravens have ever had. That would be some high praise right there. Because like you mentioned, Ravens have had a lot, a lot of great, not just good, great, phenomenal, legendary defensive players i think in order for kyle hamilton to even be entered into that conversation the, his level of consistency we just had to continue it would have to continue now you did bring up a good point him just literally being able to do everything anything anywhere on the field that's big that's huge now um defense is different nowadays defense is very different because you can't there's so much that you can't do as a defensive player nowadays so when you see a good defense it's like wow that's really a good defense because they're not only a good defense but physically but they're good defense mentally because for you to be able to get around all the penalties and stuff get around all the rules that benefit the offense and still hold it down still hold a team to a certain amount of points uh still lead the league in, in sacks lead the league and turn it what for you to be able to do all that stuff with the way that the league is set up now oh you are an amazing defense you, and you are like really for real so with Kyle Hamilton um, does he have a chance to be Ravens' best defensive player ever? I think he has a chance to be Ravens' most versatile defensive player ever. Best? It, it would take a lot, a, a lot, a lot. Um, but I could say he could be one of the best ever. I, could, I, could, I think he could get that for sure. But the best? I don't, ooh, man. <laughs> Again, that's... That's, that's how I praise. And Kyle Hamilton, he is an amazing player. He is an amazing player. 
Um, but I, ooh, best, the best Ravens defensive player ever. Could he get that? Anything's possible, but let's just start with him being one of the Ravens' best, possibly one of the Ravens' best defensive players that they've ever had. I think, again, it'll take a lot of consistency because you got somebody like an Ed Reed, like, <laughs> yeah, like that's Bill Belichick, the greatest coach ever. Oh, watch for watch for number twenty. Watch for look for where Air Reed is every play. But I feel like offensive coordinators and coaches. I feel like they got to do that now with Kyle Hamilton. You got to look to see where he is every play because he could be lining up literally every, anywhere, anywhere, and he can do a great job of it. It's funny because I remember last year we we, we would joke around talking about he was the Ravens' best pass rusher. That that actually might have been real because he can rush the pass. He can do everything, man. He can do everything. So I respect your. Your statement um, But it's just tough to say Oh yeah for sure Next question came from my guy TJ He said Good morning Raven I, I just want to say Joe Burrow is trash And Josh Allen is trash Honestly <laughs> No they're, they're not Neither one of the two is trash They're not trash But anyway He said uh, If Lamar had any of the weapons they have You wouldn't even hear about them So sick of the narrative about Lamar He's just a running quarterback My thing is He is not the only quarterback that runs in the NFL And quite honestly He's more poised and accurate then Burrow and Allen combined. How many MVPs they have again? And Burrow played a trash Bills defense. Only reason they won, uh, we beat them easily without Greg Roman calling plays in that playoff game. He was the reason we lost. No carries to JK at the goal line. Three dumb pass plays at the goal line. No I formations runs with JK or Augusta Bus at the goal line. What the team keep it clean was that? Engraving. Uh, he said, <laughs> I said, like, you still got some pent up frustration at Greg Roman. Cause you, 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 you still, you were going in on this. And then he said, um, God answered my prayer when we parted ways. Oh yeah, yeah, he definitely. It, oh, it was personal. It, it was personal for him. He 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 prayed about Greg Roman getting fired or them parting ways and mutually. Oh, oh yeah, that was personal. Anyway, he said God answered my prayers when we parted ways. Now watch Lamar and our new God sent offense set this league on fire. Super Bowl after another. Praise God. Amen. Sorry for the paragraph. God bless you and the family. Tyler Huntley played better than Josh Allen with terrible offensive play calling. And Joe Burrow had a sigh of relief after the Huntley fumble and the return. We'll be back better than ever. Ravens will be back. Uh, Ray, Ray, Roquan Smith. Is re reincarnated Ray Lewis just watching. Graven just watched. Three games. Job not finished. Mamba mentality. Oh, excuse me. Mamba mentalamarity. Okay, I like that one. There's a little there's a tongue twister though. But that's good. Mamba mentalamarity. Let's go.